uh, thank you so much both of you for for joining me today about the movie um in some degree is it quite strange to still be discussing it because I guess it must feel like such a long time ago now it was made but I'm sure a project like this is one you are just happy to continuously cast your mind back to and, and still speak about yes I think that's the purpose of it it's uh, that, that that the film doesn't that the impact of the film doesn't finish uh, when you leave the, the cinema. Mm. It goes with you and, and you can keep discussing it. The, 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 wor- the best news would be that we don't discuss it anymore because it's being resolved. <laughs> and it's, uh, but it's not. Mm. Yeah, and, and Sophia, I was gonna say- I don't know. I found the film so incredibly subtle and I think this territory when you delve into it it can so easily become over sentimental almost exploitative sometimes if it's not that handled properly but this always feels subtle and on the right side can you tell that right from the script or did you need reassurances from speaking to to Anna and and other people just to to make sure that the tone of the film would be would be as as spot on as it is um well um to be honest, when I first read the script, I thought it was a really fantastic kind of psychological thriller slash horror film. And I had absolutely no idea that it was based in reality. And and when I found that out, I mean, I was just blown away um, and couldn't quite believe it. Um, I was offered the job um, only, I think about a week before we started shooting. So I didn't have that much time to do any sort of real research of my own, but Anna and Lucia were both so well informed and researched themselves about the topic that I really just, you know, trusted both of them um, to to guide me and to, you know, hold my hand really as we, as we went through it. Yeah, Lucia, I mean, did you, I know you knew Anna beforehand. Yeah, um, yes, it- I did. This must yeah. have been one of those roles that you must have just thought, thank you so much for thinking of me. Because, I mean, it is, it's a tough one, emotionally draining, I'm sure. But uh, it's a gift, isn't it, for, for an actress? Totally. To like this. Oh, yes, for sure. Uh, just uh, uh, um, answering to you for the question before, I would like just to add a little thing that is, I think um, Anna was very careful would not exploit exploiting is that how you say in English yeah um and and uh basically what her goal was to tell the story the way it is but respecting uh who who goes through that in real life so she was very very careful and she was able to do a for me a masterpiece uh beautifully um taken care of artistically and at the same time very much uh, raw without um, how do you say with the straightforward to the subject matter but without hurting and without exploiting uh, that so but uh, yes it was a it was a gift (laughs) a great gift that I don't know when and if I will have it sometime uh, in the future because um, it's um, it's different. Um, she gave me different um, challenges and, um, and it's different gifts in one gift, which is first to have this character, uh, the way she created this character because this, this character is not a, it's not based on a real person, but it is based on a real case. Uh, so she she gave me this character and also the privilege and the responsibility to give voice to mothers that actually go through this and, and live this in the real life. So all of this, it's, it's for me as an actor is one of my biggest roles is to be able to, through my um, craft, be able to say something to the world or say something that should be brought up and be discussed um, between everyone. So, yes. 
It makes sense. I'm sorry, my my English sometimes. No, it's total Ooh. sense, Don. <laughs> okay. But I just wonder if there's a. Did you feel that pressure to play a mother who represents so many mothers going through this exact same thing? And and have you had much feedback since? I know so much of you know. I'm sure you get asked a lot about research and stuff like that. But I'm quite interested to know about people that have seen the movie and if, if you've had dialogue with with mothers since seeing this who have who have let you know you know what they what they make of it all. I did, I did have, uh, and uh, actually very recently, I got a, a message, um, a direct message, Instagram, uh, from a mother that went through this uh, struggle, a very similar story uh, in, UK, in the UK. And, and she, she said that finally the film is being released in UK I'm, uh, I'm very glad that people are going to be able to, uh, because she's, she is Portuguese and she was able to watch it here. Mm. But um, so yes, we, me, Anna, I'm sure Sophia as well, but in Portugal, we got a, a big, big response from, from people that know about the, 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 what, what's happening, people that went through it. And it's very delicate uh, the way uh, the, the way that they approach and and um, the, how they get how much they get touched by it, which at the same time for us was was uh, how do I felt how do I say I don't want to sound selfish, <laughs> but grateful in a way that I'm glad that my that we worked so hard to make to make it. Um, to be fair to these people and to, to represent and give the voice to those people that actually go through this suffering so, so big, such a big suffering. Um, so, um, yes, um, <laughs> I'm lost <laughs> with my answer, but... I don't remember your question anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it was a great answer, but I was because I was going to say I mean, <laughs> the um, the film. I mean, when there's moments when she's obviously trying to communicate with her daughter through sign language, and the people who are working at the sort of social services are stopping her doing so, and it all seems mm -hmm. so cruel and unjust, and quite at times almost like nasty but I, I i felt that the film always remains so human and sympathetic that i don't hate anyone in particular i hated mm. the system i wasn't hating the individuals exactly the rules was was that what did you both of you get that from the script did it did it because it because it, it, there's no villains here really are oh, the villain is is exactly. the world if that makes sense <laughs> Totally, and I totally agree with you. I will uh, let uh, Sophia speak because she's so much better. <laughs> no, <laughs> I get lost in my in my thoughts. I have three hundred thoughts in my head, and then I try to translate them to English. And <laughs> um, but uh, yes, I, I totally agree with you. And and Anna was very careful with that too. She didn't want villains, or she wanted real people. And some people work for the system. And have to and, and have to do it the way they're told to, and uh, uh, parents uh, also do wrong things, do mistakes. Uh, so all of that, and and uh, and to 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 other uh, words, but to call for the human to the to the human side of it, and 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 look at uh, real human beings, and and what is. And what is uh, nasty or not to to be um, said or done to a human being? Mm. Yeah, uh, so, 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 Sophia, I was going to ask too because I mean, back you know a few uh, years ago, I remember seeing I Daniel Blake, uh, which seemed to shine such a the Ken Loach film, which shines such a harsh light on the kind of on the benefit system in the UK, and it really sort of and it won obviously the Palm Door at Cannes at the time, and it really kind of went some way in reminding us that films are not always obviously there just to entertain some films feel like they can be impactful um is that something i mean when when sort of, sort of balancing a kind of career and choosing roles is it nice to choose films like this every now and again that do feel like they do have that impactful element to it and their sole responsibility isn't just to entertain but to educate as well and to to inform yeah completely um i mean saying this yesterday um you know, so much of the of the 
product that's turned out by Hollywood, um, especially currently with all the sort of comic book movies, they are made to provide audience members, you know, a couple of hours of complete escapism from their own minds and their own reality and their own problems. Um, and there's, of course, there's a, you know, a place for those kind of films, um, you know, but a film like this serves to do quite the opposite. I think it, you can go in feeling maybe possibly stable within yourself, but come out feeling, I mean, I certainly, when I saw this one for the first time, I mean, I, it's a sort of lump in the throat type feeling. Um, and I have this uh, personally a recurring dream, um, not very often, but it's a dream whereby I'm trying to talk or I'm trying to express myself and no sound comes out when I when I try to speak. And in a way, this film kind of throughout kind of feels like that. It's, you know, pe people are desperate to be heard. They're desperate to be understood. But there's just this, you know, miscommunication um, all around. They're stuck in a sort of system of bureaucracy and and they're it's it's very difficult to watch. I've only seen it once um, and I don't think I'm brave enough. To, to sit and watch it again because yeah. when you've been because obviously you've been in sort of other otherworldly productions let's say films that are sort of step way out of reality and do provide that kind of escapism which like you said there is a huge place for but when you're in a film like this that kind that has so much uh authenticity to it and is and is dealing with such real and raw themes is there a different sort of pressure for you as an actor than there is on a on a set or do or, or and is your skill set different at all do, do you rely on the same techniques and approach that you do with anything i get is is but in other words is the is the job always to find the truth in the character regardless of of of, of how real or how fake the story might be mm. well look i've never taken an acting class in my life um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm the last person to ask about kind of method and process because it's all just always been very instinctive and uh don't know <laughs> but no um, in answer to your question i mean i I approach every single job in the same way um, and fundamentally the most important thing is the story um, and we are as actors we're storytellers so you know as long as the material speaks to you first then you know that you've got an opportunity to be a kind of a channel for a character to come through and we're, we're, we're the middlemen in a way as actors we are the sort of vessel for communication from maybe I mean, this sounds awfully pretentious but we're a way to kind of meet we meet our audience in the middle there's a camera in between us but it's I think often we provide audience members an opportunity to kind of access maybe emotions within themselves that have been blocked or you know suppressed in some way um I mean actors I'm sure Lucia can testify I mean we're all kind of you know very complicated, weird people mm -hmm. <laughs> with a lot of, you know, our own emotional um, baggage and issues. Yes. And I think, you know, <laughs> um, you know, naturally, I think most most actors that I've met, especially the really really good ones, you know, they're very shy. Um, and we, you know, it, I feel grossly uncomfortable in my own skin out in the real world. Um, but yet somehow, when I'm um playing a character or a you know a role it, it, i seem to become i don't i don't know why i don't know how but there's a sort of power that i found or a strength within me that um uh, doesn't necessarily kind of infiltrate my real life would you agree lucia yes i do agree with you i um, also that actors are <laughs> crazy. I, I do agree with you i i am sometimes i get to I wouldn't say paranoid, but so uh, so focused on on my goal. My, I think my biggest goal when I get a role, fictional or not, is is to be true um, and to be and in this specific case, uh, to be able to represent uh, these mothers or as or as a family that that needs to that that look for a space to speak, to, to be heard, and they are not. And uh, I, 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 I got very, very focused on this and very, um, uh, how do you say, uh, I, I'm, the only word that comes up, it's paranoid, but it's, uh, I, there's another word that I cannot find it now. Um, so I, I, 
th that was my biggest role for this one. And I try to be, a, a, I always try to, to find a, a reason why this character is in the story. What what's to be what can be said through this? What message? What what am I representing in this in the real society or not? Um, so that's part of my. I don't I don't have a method uh, specific method, but that's what I try as first steps to 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 get in character, and then and then just live the live live it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like with a project like this, there is there's so much complexities that you both really did have to to live it. And I just wondered about filming with children and if having children around the place actually made it a nicer environment because they're not bogged down by the industry. They're fearless. Their eyes are open. They're kind of they'll take any instruction and kind of run away with it as as they please. And when you're on a, 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 a shoot like this, which is quite hard, and, and you become so involved in your characters, did having the kind of I don't know blissful outlook from a child's perspective around on set a lot was that quite needed would you say on this shoot uh, yes and no because um they 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 could bring up some uh, lightness to the set in a way that they wanted to play and and not being um so um so absorbed or uh, not absorbed um, so involved in this uh, in this uh, drama and and uh, responsibility and all of that they just play they play and they're true and um but also the for example the 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 kid he's a teenager now but he was playing the the oldest kid 12 years old he was very careful um and and he was he was um, worried about me and uh, Ruben that plays um, the father because uh, he was uh, after we shot the, the scene that the social services take the kids away from us. It's very, very, it was very hard that moment. It was one shot um, and uh, we left the set and he was very worried about it. He was very worried about me. He was always sitting next to me, um, you know, cuddling me and, and uh, asking if I was all right and then asking Ruben. And then we had, we had the opportunity to talk and say, yes, I'm fine. This is part of so, so it's they're so true and they live this so uh, genuinely, genuinely, I have, uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm not saying the, uh, it right, but that sometimes it's good that they bring the the, um, the lightness of, of their youth and the way I'm playing this person, just that. Uh, and sometimes they believe it so much that they, they can be a bit, um, you know what I mean? Uh, a bit too much involved. And then we have to tell them that, that is it's just uh we're just acting because yeah. that's what it is yeah i was i was thinking i mean there are uh, sort of two such great roles that you guys have got here and i was just thinking because today i've this is my second interview i've done and the other one was with two other brilliant actresses and keely hawes being one that in, in a sort of new tv series and it just got me thinking about sort of over the last sort of just over the last week i've seen about sort of five really brilliant female-led stories with really great central characters at them. I just wondered from if you guys have noticed an upturn or an increase in better, more nuanced sort of central roles that are out there at the moment for, for women in, in the industry, maybe in light of the kind of, you know, the Me Too movement and stuff. Is that, do you think that's had in, an impact that can be seen yet? I mean, obviously the idea is that it will improve things in the future, but do you think, you know, maybe three or four years on, we're already seeing better roles from, from inside the industry, from your perspective? Do you, do you feel like there's some good stuff out there at the moment? I mean, there's still a long way to go, but is, are there encouraging signs? Right. Do you want to answer I, I the think, question? Yeah, yeah, I, I can. Uh, so, so I can answer. Yeah, I think um, for sure. Um, and what's really interesting um, about getting older within this industry is it's quite nice. It's quite a relief actually to to shed the the skin and the pressure of of, 
of being cast in something simply to look pretty or to be attractive or desirable. Um, and I found that um, there are a lot of really, really interesting roles for women um, <clears throat> that are actually more about the character. I and mean, I've just been playing, um, just done two episodes of the new series of Silent Witness that will start um, after Christmas, um, so early next year. Um, and what was great about this character is that, I mean, yes, she is a woman, obviously. Yes, I am a woman, but the character could easily as, uh, have been a man. And it's it's nice when kind of there seems to be sort of coming in a kind of much more of a sort of fluidity about characters and, and less of a sort of focus on kind of man and woman and the kind of just just the external. I feel that there's a depth coming through um, writing these days that's much more grounded and centered in in character. Um, and I, I and I'm really really enjoying that. Um, getting older, I mean, I've I've always felt like a character actor trapped inside a leading lady's body, and I've always felt you know very uncomfortable having to kind of you know play the 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 muse or the object of desire, and because I certainly don't feel like that on the inside. Um, and so it's it's really nice. Um, there's something quite liberating um, about getting older, and I think we we're. <clears throat> as women in the industry, you know, we're very, very fortunate to be living in this time because um, it is true that, you know, not long ago, you know, as a woman in the industry, pretty much you hit 40 and, and that was it. And then maybe you're lucky to come back and play the grandma when you're 70, but there was this a sort of huge gap in between the ages of about 40 and, you know, 60, 70, where there weren't roles for women. Um, and so it's really nice. Um, I, de I definitely think that there's some really good stuff coming through. Yes, I, I agree with you. And I, I would like to add just to something about uh, because there are there is more space for women directors. I think that opens the, the, this um, or, or fills this gap as well, uh, because uh, there's a, a different approach of uh, um, of, of the, the presence of the woman in, in a story as a character. And uh, so I think it, it also helps that there are more women directors. <laughs> yeah, I well, think. I think for listen as well, I mean, there's a sort of sensitivity yes. in a, um, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, um, you know, the, the fact is from the mother's perspective, it felt like a film that was, didn't have to be made or directed by a woman, but certainly I think maybe benefited from having a female kind of voice mm -hmm. in the lens. But um, have, you, have you given much thought to one day stepping into the kind of behind the scenes? I know Anna used to be an, a an actress as well, didn't she? So she mm -hmm. kind of made the move. Have, have you have either of you ever kind of considered producing, writing, directing, anything like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to direct sometime. And actually Anna told me, you should, you should, you should. I don't know. I don't feel ready yet, but I love photography. I love to, to, to uh, photography in general. So, uh, and uh, Anna knows me for a long time, so she's always telling me, "Come on, come on, come on." Maybe one day I would love to. Yes. Um, so my passion, I've I never had the desire to to direct um, fiction. Um, but my passion as, a, as an audience member um, is I love to watch documentary film. Um, it's all I watch, in fact. Um, and so if I had a kind of an ambition outside of um, being an actor, I think documentary film, whether it's, you know, helping to, you know, produce, direct or just just be part of, you know, of making documentaries about important subjects. I think that's where that's where I would go. Um, I'm not um, by nature um, a leader. I I'm a team player and I love being part of a team and the responsibility that a director has on a film set is so monumental. Um, and I, I, I don't think that I'm the kind of character that could cope with, with being the captain of a ship in that respect. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy just to do the acting in, in feature films for now.
So just that, my, my final question before before I do go, I was just going to ask you uh, quickly, Sophia, it was mainly for you this one, because Shuti Gatwa has obviously been announced as a new Doctor Who, and you, you've been involved in the, the Doctor Who universe before. How, how much are you looking forward to seeing the, uh, that by him sort of take on that role and that, that, that p- sort of esteemed and prestigious role that has gone to such a wonderful young actor? Yeah, it was so great. I mean, this is what, you know, the magic of Doctor Who and the fact that it just as a TV series, it, you know, it could potentially shapeshift <laughs> till the end of time. Um, and so it's, you know, it's great. I'm thrilled for him. I'm thrilled for the show. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be great. Really, really great. Have you seen Doctor Who, Lucia, before? No. No, <laughs> Maybe it's, it's a very English thing. For si- it doesn't see. I mean, I mean. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Who doesn't strike me as Lucy's cup of tea, to be honest. <laughs> No, well, anyway. so, but it, it, listen was certainly my cup of tea, and I think will be many people's oh, cup of teas when that gets released because it's a uh, yeah, like I said at the beginning, it's, it was such a brilliant film that I'm not having not going to be able to shake off anytime soon. <laughs> I don't think. Oh, um, but thank you so much for both of you joining me today to speak about the movie in more in more depth. And um, yeah, it's been a pleasure meeting you, Sophia and Lucia, meet speaking to you again. Uh, I'm sure maybe next time I interview interview you, it'll be for your directorial debut. Who knows? <laughs> you never know you never know um, you never know you never know brilliant all right we'll have a nice rest of the day guys and I'll... all right bye, thank you Stephen. Stephen. thank you so thank much you. bye bye-bye ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is that yeah. from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey you